We're halfway through the template and course January sale, information in the description below, but this week on Obsidian there was a release of the 1.10 Insider build which brought loads of canvas commands and also some Obsidian sync settings where it warns you about the vault being in Dropbox or iCloud elsewhere. Then the Obsidian mobile and tablet iPad versions brought the canvas view to those devices and you can see there are some warnings for iOS users. But for the rest of the week, there were so many new plugins. There were some updates, but they mainly related to the new plugins. First up, we have Aggregator. And what this does is combines files together into one big file, giving you an overview or a map of content. But it does require the understanding of the foreign language rejects, which isn't easy. The Audio Notes plugin is sort of related to the audio recorder, but you can put MP3 files or any audio file into an Obsidian note, go into the settings and add duration settings and stuff, but you can add an API key, so an API key for OpenAI, so any of the AI bots, to then summarize the audio you have inside of a file. So you get a summary text of the video, podcast, whatever file it is, and there are hotkeys as well that you can add to it. Auto scroll does exactly what you expect it to. You can change the speed of the scroll, but when you have a file that requires scrolling, you can push the button in the ribbon and it will scroll down the file. Archive box is a way of storing external links inside of your vault elsewhere. So you could store it in something called archive box, but you need to be using that as well as a subsidian, which I don't like. Then we have the canvas presentation plugin. Now I personally couldn't get this to work, but what it does is it creates an index card inside of your canvas, and then you can go between slide one, two, three, four, whatever you've numbered those files. And it does this using commands from the command palette that it adds into your obsidian. The canvas note random plugin is just like any other random note plugin where you can add random notes, a collection of random notes to your canvas through a command. And this is the window that you see and then it will randomly add all those files to the canvas that you have set. The checklist reset plugin does again exactly what it says. It resets the status of all of the tick boxes or tasks check boxes inside of a file. So you can see once ticked, I reset it, now it's unchecked. The contacts plugin is sort of like a, a people's plugin where you can have a file that specifically got information for contacts. And you can see there's all the information there inside of the file. And then when you open up inside the side panel, the contacts section using the button in the ribbon, it will give you a list of all of the contacts you've made, the names of the people. You can sort them by any information. You can see inside of the file, you've got the key, the name, the last name. If we add a new contact, it creates a new file. Now, the name of the file isn't the same as the name of the person, so you might want to rename the file to be the same as the person, so renaming the file Danny and the name being Danny. So the contacts page shows the name, but the file in the file explorer shows the name of the file. And you can sort by name, sort by contact, and sort by birthday, which is the information inside the files. The Chord Lyrics plugin is useful for musicians. I'm not a musician, so this doesn't mean much to me, but inside of a code block that you can put chord lyrics to, you see at the top you've got chord lyrics, then you've got the ticks for the code block, and you can have the words or the lyrics of the song, and then the chords above them. The Crumbs plugin, I couldn't quite get working, but you can see the breadcrumbs of where a file is inside of a list, so you can see the hierarchy going down. I personally can't see a use for this, but it's an option. Then we have the Obsidian Clipper. Now, I personally won't use this because I use Otero, but if you do have information on side of a web page and then you put this so you can see the text inside of the settings, you can drag that into your browser. I use Microsoft Edge and then you have a essentially a click button to clip any highlighted text into a daily note inside of your Obsidian. So I'm on my website, highlighted the text, clicked on that button inside the tab, now open and you can see in the Obsidian journal file, it's taken the highlighted text and added a link to my journal file automatically. And it's actually created the journal daily note as well. The D2 plugin is for diagrams. You do need to have D2 installed. So there's like a, an external installation that you need to have for Tesseract and D2 for this plugin to work. So I personally don't use this, but it's something to 
be aware of. Then you've got DMN plugin, which again looks at using diagrams inside of Obsidian with lots of formatting. Now, I personally don't use diagrams, so these plugins don't interest me, but they may interest you. I prefer just using the canvas. Then we have the external link opener. So you can open an external link either in the browser, in an Obsidian modal, which you can see a screenshot of, or an Obsidian tab. Then the external link helper lets you search for any external link inside of your Obsidian vault. Now, when we go into the settings, you can change the settings to find specific links, but you can go into the command, look for any of the external links inside of a essentially a quick switcher or open up the side panel, then search the external links inside the side panel. You can search for the name of the link. So Danny, you can see there's the link inside of that file, or you can search for the alias of the external link. So website is the alias and Danny Hatcher is the actual like website linked, which can be useful if you use lots of external links. Then we have file chucker. Now this is very similar to the move file to folder default core hotkey, but there is a little addition to this. So if we go to a file and we file checker, move to new or existing folder, it will move the file, so the external links file to a folder, then move me to the next file down. Whereas in the core main hotkey, when you move a file, so move the current file to another folder, it keeps you on that file. So depending on your preference, this plugin may be helpful. The file color plugin isn't something I would use because I use the style settings plugin and the supercharged links plugin, but this allows you to add a color to any file or folder from a color palette you set up inside of the settings of this plugin. So you can add a color, choose any color that you want, red, blue, yellow, purple, etc. name it. Then inside the files, right click, and then it gives you the option to set color, and that can be any color from the palette that you've added. The fuzzy tag plugin does fuzzy stuff. No, I don't know what fuzzy means. It's something to do with search, but I don't really care. Uh, what it basically does is let you search through your tags. And when you're adding a new tag, it gives you highlighted text or letters for tags you've already got. So if we go into the tags pane, you can see I've got the book tag search. Then when I start typing in book, the B is highlighted. That's, I believe, the fuzzy search. I may be butchering that, but I'm not a programmer, but that's what I can see. The Google Photos plugin lets you search inside of Google Photos in your Obsidian. So you can use, you can see in the command palette, your Google Photos inside of Obsidian, but I didn't use Google Photos. I use local files inside of screenshots and stuff. So this isn't something I would use. Then we have GPT-3 Notes, another AI focused plugin, which allows you to use GPT-3 inside of your notes to generate text, very similar to Text Generator, another AI plugin. But this one actually has a better UI from my experience. When you add the OpenAI API key inside of the settings, you get a nice pop-up window, which to me is easier as a user. Then we have the Hints Flow plugin. Now, this requires another external service called Hints, and this allows you to essentially put a message inside of an external app. That could be an email, that could be WhatsApp, it could be anything that Hints connects to, and that will direct the text into your Obsidian. So it could be used for quick capture, but for me, I use my phone anyway. And this is a paid subscription thing, which I'm not a fan of. Then we have Hugo. Preview Obsidian, which uses Hugo, and you can preview it in Obsidian. Hugo, again, is another external tool that you can see inside of Obsidian, kind of like an embed. Then we have Key Shots, which is like hotkeys, like tons and tons of hotkeys from all the Kodi developer people that love to move around without the mouse. Yeah, there's loads of hotkeys in here for you to, to do all of those things, which looks great, but it's far too much for me to remember. So I personally won't use this, but for those that like it, it could be useful. Then we have Local Images Plus. So instead of linking out to an image, you can see there to an external image, it saves the images locally, which is what I do by default anyway. So not useful for me. The Math Jax Wikilinks is another math plugin. I can't personally see the difference between this and some of the other plugins, but you can see there are some viewing differences that those that know math may understand. Mermaid Tools uses Mermaid. Now, that's a scary thing for me because it's really complicated, but what this tool lets you do is essentially just 
click buttons and it puts it into the file. You can see I was experimenting earlier and when you click on the code, it adds a mermaid code block. You can click in the drop down menu, click on what you want, and then it will insert all of the text needed into that code block. And when you open up the code block, you can then change the words and figure out how it changes to Gantt chart or whatever it is that you've used. Then we have a mind map plugin, another one, uh, and it's useful, but again, I don't see why I would use this over using the canvas, but you can see it's got parents and different hierarchies of a mind map to add some visual aspects to your obsidian. Now, open gate, I thought was gonna be useless. I didn't think I would want to use it, but it's actually really interesting because it lets you use or save any website, so any link, you can see I've got the updates, so the Obsidian Updates link is saved inside of OpenGate. Then inside the ribbon, I get a button. I push that button, and it looks at the website and shows me the website inside of my Obsidian. So I kind of get like a, an updated plugin stats view inside of my Obsidian, and this can work for any link, which is really cool. The paste URL into selection is one of those smaller plugins that it's just a really nice feature that you'll see in other apps. Now we have that foreign language reject stuff in the settings, which is done automatically, which is lovely. And what this does is when I have a link saved to my clipboard, I can highlight a word, paste it, and then it pastes inside the word and turns it to an external link. The paste as HTML is great for uh, programmer developer people if they want to see the HTML of web pages, but that's uh, not for me. I couldn't get the Project Garden plugin to work, but it's meant to show you all of the files from a certain folder, but this just mimics projects or DB folder or data views, so I personally wouldn't use it. Then we have ProZen, which is mimicking much of the flow sort of views that you see in other applications. It just gets rid of everything, as you can see. So when we go into the options, you can customize the opacity, the scale and the text and the views, the animation, and change what it looks like, your experience. So when you are writing, maybe long form writing, or want to focus on something like a focus mode, you can go to the command palette or set up a hotkey, turn it on, then you get a nice animation to the file you're working on, and then type. Now, I use workspaces and have like six panes open with tabs, so it's not for me, but for those of you that like just writing, could be useful. Quote Share is probably one of the content creator more favored plugins, and what it allows you to do is highlight text in a file. Then when you go to the command palette, quote share, select it, you can then share whatever that quote is inside of a predefined color palette block image thing, copy it to your clipboard and then paste it. You can paste it online. And what it does is it takes the file name, puts it underneath the text you've highlighted and there's your image. Read Later is related to the Read Later style applications like Pocket and Instapaper. And what this plugin lets you do is integrate those apps with Obsidian easier to sync backwards and forwards, but I use Zotero, so it's not something I personally would use. Review Notes plugin shows the most recently modified or newly created files, but you can sort the files to do that, or data view, or literally any other way, so I don't see this as a plugin I would use. Set in Obsidian is very similar to the full calendar plugin, but is, as you can see, in beta version, so it gives you a list view, week, month view of things inside of a file, which is a little bit limiting, but it's still a useful plugin in beta. I think full calendar does a better job right now. Then we have surfing, and this is very similar to open gate, but surfing lets you surf lots of different places inside of your obsidian. You can go into the settings. There are lots of options. You can see search, theme, bookmark. But one of the interesting things that I noticed is you can change the browser, but you can surf actually like browse inside of your obsidian as a tab. So we've got DuckDuckGo as the default, and it's just a tab. So I could do my internet searching in obsidian. Moving sideways, we've got Obsidian Stylus. So going from plugins and search to just changing the look of Obsidian, you can add some code blocks inside of a file to change the way it looks. Now, at the moment, you have to go to the reading view to actually see the results, but I live in live preview, so it's not useful for me. I personally prefer using just the default CSS and CSS snippets. The spoiler block does exactly what it says on the tin. It has a spoiler block, which is a code block you can see by the back ticks, and any text inside of that code block is hidden. Then you click to show it, which can be useful if you're screen sharing and you want to keep something private, but I can't see many people doing that. Then we have sync graph settings, which again, does what it says. So the global graph view settings, I've got a group in there, and when I sync the graph, it syncs those group settings to my local graph. 
can be useful. I don't use a graph, so I don't see a use for it for me. Then transcription is another AI focused tool. And what it does is it lets AI transcribe any video or media that you have inside of your Obsidian Vault, again, requiring an API key. And translate again is very similar using an API, not necessarily AI, there are lots of options here, but it does let you translate text from whatever language to whatever language. Google Translate is the default in the settings for the general section, and then you've got the glossary and loads of other things you can do with this. Certainly a plugin worth exploring if you either are learning a language, want to learn a language, or are just curious to see what your fault is like in other language, maybe? The Terminal plugin is one I alluded to last week with people playing Tetris and Spotify inside of their Obsidian because it allows you to run essentially things from the terminal inside of Obsidian, but most users won't use it. Then we have Text Dataset Aid, and this goes well beyond me. I don't really know what's going on. So those people that like computer science techie, weird language stuff, this could be really useful, but for me, I, I don't get it. Just going to be completely blunt, I have no idea what this does. Then we have Text Extractor. Now, this is again very similar to another plugin, Taskbone OCR or Obsidian OCR, and it takes text from an image and transcribes it or puts it into a file. But again, that's in beta. Then we have To Do Sort, which sorts to do's. <laughs> Now, inside of the settings, you have to set up which order you want to go in, but when you tick things off, it will automatically push either the ticked to the top or the unticked to the top, and you can see that's inside of the settings in the community plugins. Then we have toggle case, which toggles the case of whatever words you've highlighted, and that can be either all capitals or some capitals and some lowercase, and then you have all lowercase, and when you go in, you toggle through what setting you have, and that can be, obviously, because it's a command, set as a hotkey. I personally don't see a use for this. And then we have various complements. Now, this has been out for a while, so it's not a new plugin, but it was talked about quite a lot in the Discord, and this allows you, when you're typing, to essentially autocorrect for a file so you can see I've got Danny as a file I start typing and it gives me that suggestion I type typing chords and it gives me that suggestion because it's an already made file inside my vault creating the backlinks for me when I push enter when going into the settings there are loads of options because this is a more established plugin you can change the appearance change the customizations change the current file complements and other elements of the complements, complements being the auto suggestions or the auto corrects of the, the suggestion boxes. Uh, then we have writing, and this is very similar to the long form plugin, but from my experience, long form is better. It's also been out longer, but it's the same principle. You get a, a main file, then inside the file you have metadata of the pages and the tags, and it shows you inside the left sidebar, or wherever you've moved it, the files inside of the book, or long form, then in the right sidebar, or wherever you've put it, the amount of words you've written, and then daily goal words, or whatever it is. But what I've noticed is it can duplicate the files, so you can see I've actually got chapter 123, and then 123 again, which I'm not sure why that happened, I think because I moved the location of the folder, but just something to be aware of. Now, Wordy. Wordy's pretty cool because what you can do is you can highlight a word, then when you activate it through the command palette or a hotkey, you can find synonyms. So these are synonyms for good for those English that have this as a second language or want to expand their words in some way in their writing. This could be quite helpful to maybe change up the words that you're using or the words that you're writing with. Those that use Wakona will know how to use this plugin, but again, it requires a little bit of code and the use of Wakona as an external tool, but it can now be used in Obsidian. Then we have Wacker Time, <laughs> another plugin where it brings in a tool from elsewhere and lets it be used inside of Obsidian. This one, time tracking for Obsidian use, something I don't really want to do because uh, uh, that'll be bad. Then we have a web page HTML export, which at the moment only works for Windows and it allows you to export an Obsidian file to HTML. 